Hi guys! Right now, all we have is a simple four bar loop. It's time to add some structure to the track. Let's start at the beginning and create an intro. Our intro will be four bars long and obviously needs to be at the start of the track. So I'm going to switch to the playlist with F5 and hit Ctrl A to select all. With everything selected, click on one of the patterns and drag the patterns so they start on bar 5. If you're having trouble getting the placement right, check your snap settings. If you can't move the patterns at all, make sure you have either the pencil or brush selected with the P or B keys. Now that we've added some room for our intro, we're going to add another instrument. This time, we'll be using a pad. Pads tend to be longer, softer sounds that are used to add padding to a track and fill it up. I'm going to use Citrus for this again, sorry Fruity Edition users, as it has some nice pad presets. Let's add another instance of Citrus. I'm going to use the Add menu again, but you might want to press F8 to open up the plugin picker and choose Citrus from there. Close the plugin picker with Escape if you decide you don't want to use it. I'm going to load the Ashen Light preset, which is under Pads. Control L to link to a new mixer track. F4 to add a pattern, call it Pad, and assign a color. F5 and add the pattern to the start of the playlist in a new track. Press F7 to open the piano roll. Citrus should already be selected as your instrument, but you can confirm this at the top of the piano roll. Pads tend to play pretty long notes and often play several notes at once. If I place a note, it's pretty short. And we want our notes to be one bar long. So I'm going to drag out the end of the note until it is one bar long. Now that I've set the note length, it will be used for any new notes. I'm going to quickly click in a few chords. My chord progression will be D minor, F major, C major, G major. Don't worry if that means nothing to you right now. You can simply copy the notes I have added. These are D, F and A for D minor, C, F and A for F major, C, E and G for C major, B, D and G for G major. If you want to loop the pad section, you can hit L to switch to pattern mode to loop the pattern. Alternatively, you could select the first four bars in the playlist by holding down control and clicking and dragging with the mouse in the playlist header. If you make a selection in the playlist, the selected section is looped in song mode. Note that we already have a section selected from when we hit Ctrl A before. Hit space to see what it sounds like. I'm noticing that Citrus is pretty loud while playing back the track. So let's switch to the mixer with F9 and turn down the volume of the pad. That's a lot better. I can double click on the pattern in the playlist to quickly return to the piano roll. If we look at the notes in the piano roll, we can see that we have a few notes that are shared between chords. I'm going to delete the A and F from the second chord and make the notes in the first chord last the full two bars. I'll leave the rest, but feel free to try doing the same thing with the C and the G too. Now let's open up the mixer with F9. We're going to add a filter to this mixer channel. We could actually do this directly in Citrus, which has its own filters, but I want to show you how you can add effects to the mixer. Make sure you have the right mixer track selected by clicking on it. It should be called Ashen Light. Over here on the right, we have 10 slots where we can load our effects. If we click on a slot, we get a list like we did earlier for the instruments. I'm going to select Fruity Filter from the list. Again, if you don't see it, you can either switch to Simple View or open More Plugins and type in Fruity Filter to find it. We used a filter when we created our base, and Fruity Filter is much the same, 
except that as well as a low pass filter, which lets low frequencies through but removes high frequencies, we also have a high pass filter, which only lets high frequencies through, and a band pass. We'll talk about the band pass filter in a later video. For now, all we want is the low pass filter, so I'm going to turn the other filters down to zero. I'm now going to set the cutoff frequency to where I want it to be at the start of the track. I'll do this simply by playing the track and adjusting the cutoff until I like the sound. Okay, that sounds good to me. Now we want to change the cutoff as the track plays, something a bit like this. To do that, right click on the frequency knob and select Create Automation Clip. If we go to the playlist with F5, we can see an automation clip has been added to our track. Let's move it to be below the pad pattern. Right click the track lane in the playlist and press G to group it with the playlist track above it. You can hide child tracks using this little arrow here. Click again to expand the group. I find it's a good idea to group automation clips like this as it makes them easier to find and know immediately what instrument is being affected. Let's also right click the pans lane and hit A to automatically name that lane. While we're at it, I'm going to quickly do that for the other three tracks and the automation track. It only takes a moment and helps you navigate your projects if you organize them from the start. Okay, back to the automation. If you have a four bar automation clip like I do, you can drag the end point up a bit like so. If you didn't have a selection active in your playlist, your automation clip is probably eight bars long. You can simply drag the end point forward four bars and then set its value to something relatively high. Mouse over the automation clip and you will see a small circle between the two points. Use this circle to control the shape of the curve. I'm going to drag mine down so that the curve starts out flatter before rising towards the end. If we listen to the beginning of our track, we can hear the filter slowly opening. If you take a look at the cutoff frequency in the filter, press F9 to open the mixer and locate it if you've lost track of the window, we can see the cutoff knob moves automatically as the song plays. You can right click on any of the knobs in plugins that come with FL Studio to create automation clips like this. I won't cover third party VSTs but you can also automate them, just not by right clicking on the knobs. You can find your automation clips in the picker on the left of the playlist too, just like patterns. The icons at the top of the picker will switch between patterns, audio clips and automation clips. If you click on a pattern or automation clip in the playlist, the picker updates to display items of the same type as the one you clicked on. Next. Let's add something to serve as a transition from the intro into the song itself. One of the oldest tricks in the book is to take a sample of a crash symbol and then play it backwards. So let's do that. You can access samples from FL Studio's browser. Alt F8 opens and hides the browser. Don't worry that your browser doesn't look exactly the same as mine. I have a lot of extra stuff in there. Let's find packs in our browser and click on it to expand it. Let's go to drums and then symbols. Press F6 if you can't see the channel rack and then drag the thin crash sample from the browser to the channel rack. Make sure you don't drag it over an existing instrument or you'll replace it. Dropping it here in the corner is fine. Open up the sample by clicking on the instrument and enable reverse so the sample is played backwards. F4 to create a new pattern, let's call it Reverse Crash, and add it to the playlist at the end of our intro. Let's also select the last bar so we can just hear this section. I'm going to use the step sequencer to trigger the sample when the pattern starts. Let's also send the crash to its own mixer track 
with Control L. Let's play it back. Okay, it sounds like the sample is playing too late, so I'm going to drag the pattern forwards a bit so it starts earlier. That sounds a lot better. It's nearly there. Hold down the left ALT key on your keyboard and drag the pattern to temporarily disable snap and make very subtle adjustments to the position. This won't work with the right ALT key. Right ALT is used to mute patterns, so make sure you use the left one. Now there's actually an easier way of doing this that I'll show you too. However, this method won't work if you have the fruity edition. You can simply drag the sample from your browser to the playlist, reverse it, and then line it up in the playlist using the waveform as a guide so it peaks right around bar 5. This is much easier to do, so if you are using one of the other editions, feel free to use this method instead. Be aware that if you drag a sample to the playlist, it is added as an audio clip rather than in the sampler instrument. Audio clips have less options and are generally used to work directly in the playlist. Both audio clips and sampler have their place and I regularly use both. Let's take a listen to our track. Control click in the playlist header to remove the selection. Click at the start of the track to begin playback from there. That's a good start. In the next video, we will be creating a riser to improve the transition at the end of the intro. I'll see you there.